In this week in military history, we explore the U.S. testing of the first hydrogen bomb on November 1st, 1952. The United States, the Soviet Union, and their respective allies engaged in a Cold War following World War II, a rivalry waged on numerous political, economic, and technological fronts. One major area of competition was the arms race for dominance in nuclear warfare. Though other countries were developing nuclear weapons, efforts by the United States and the Soviet Union far outpaced all others in warhead production. The first nuclear weapons were produced during World War II as part of the Manhattan Project, a joint research and development initiative of the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. Nuclear physicist Robert Oppenheimer led efforts that resulted in the creation of atomic bombs that used nuclear fission as an energy source. Oppenheimer later opposed the development of hydrogen bombs as he felt it would only serve to accelerate the arms race. He was right. The United States did not formally inform the Soviets of the Manhattan Project for fear they would share technical details with German spies. However, the Soviets were secretly working on their own nuclear weapons and successfully detonated atomic weapons by 1949. The extreme, high temperatures released during thermonuclear reactions were the basis for creating weapons that were thousands of times more powerful than conventional nuclear options. These were achievable through uncontrolled, self-sustaining chain reactions using hydrogen isotopes, a process known as nuclear fusion. Edward Teller and Stanislav Ulam designed the first H-bomb and first tested it on November 1, 1952 on a small Pacific island at Eniwetok Atoll. Development of the H-bomb gave the United States a brief advantage in the nuclear arms race. However, the Soviets followed suit only nine months later with their own thermonuclear weapon. By the late 1970s, seven nations had constructed hydrogen bombs and, by the late 1980s, approximately 40,000 thermonuclear devices were stored across the globe. Join us next time for another segment of This Week in Military History with the Pritzker Military Museum and Library.